How's it going everybody? The voice of Ed Ricker here, and you're watching a flight that I recorded over the weekend, chasing my friend Shelby Vol in his FPV wing. I was flying an FPV drone and I posted this on my Instagram. But what I really want to show you is the GPS speed overlay as recorded by the GoPro Hero 8 Black. And that's what this video is all about. How to overlay those GPS telemetry icons or gauges to your footage. If you have a GoPro 5 and up, it's pretty simple. You go into your settings, go into the regional tab, and then from there, turn your GPS on. Back out of that to the main screen and then swipe from the top to see the GPS icon. Make sure it's not grayed out. It's not gonna come up immediately, and if you're inside, it may not come up at all, but make sure it is a nice solid white GPS icon. At that point, you have a GPS lock and you're able to record and your GoPro is going to do all the work for you until you choose which uh, telemetry gauges to overlay. Keep in mind that if you use Real Steady, you actually don't want to have your GPS turned on. Some people have found that uh, Real Steady malfunctions if the GPS function is turned on with a GoPro. Now, if you have a GoPro Hero 5, 6, or 7, it's going to be a little bit of a different process to overlay these telemetry gauges uh, versus having a GoPro 8, 9, or 10. Scrub around the YouTube playhead to find the part of the video that applies to your GoPro. First off, we're going to start with GoPro Hero 5, 6, and 7 because it utilizes the GoPro Quick Desktop app, which you can get for either Mac or Windows. Once you've opened up GoPro Quick, you need to add your media. I have a bunch of media already here, but on the upper left, we're going to add media. Then you click add folder. And from there, you'd point to the folder that has all of your GoPro footage with the GPS data that's been recorded. Um, so I'm gonna back out of that because I've already done that, but it's going to appear in your media list. Um, now I'm gonna go, this is gonna be some GoPro Hero 7 footage from a couple years ago. Um, so I'm gonna double click on, uh, let's just do this one, and up comes the video. So this is going to be a GoPro Hero 7 Black that was attached to an FPV quad. And here I am flying around. You might recognize this particular shot from uh, one of my videos in the past. But anyway, um, just zooming around. And so we're gonna just stop right there. And you see on the bottom of the GoPro Quick app, we have adjust gauges. We're gonna click that and it's gonna ask us to adjust gauges. Now, here's where we can add all these different gauges, um, uh, info cluster, speed tracker, GPS path, speedometer, and G-Force. And what I'm gonna do is actually just enable all of them so to show you what they do and hit save. I'm not gonna add the GoPro logo, that's just, you know. As I save that, by the way, if all those were grayed out, that means that your GoPro did not record GPS data. So either you started recording before it had a GPS lock, or you had GPS turned off, or you were inside with poor GPS signal, you know, whatever happens, you'll have to troubleshoot that on your own. But here we go. So we see um, our speedometers on the left. We have our G-force indicator. We have um, distance traveled, altitude, elevation gain, uh, the time, which is not right because my, you know, definitely was not 9.30 p.m. So that was uh, GoPro just not being set up right. Speed tracker. Uh, historically from the, the beginning to the end of the clip, as well as the path flown. Well, that's pretty cool. I do kind of question uh, the altitude and the elevation gain, which doesn't seem to be accurate, uh, but the speed seems to be good. The path seems to be good. I do notice if I'm flying underneath this building, I lose uh, GPS and then the speedometer freezes until I come out you know, from underneath it. Um, anyway, looks pretty cool. So what we have to do now, we'll just stop here and we have to create a clip. By the way, you can also move around these, uh, around the screen as you want to. You can't actually do that in the mobile app. At this point, to export it out with these overlays baked into the footage, you would then go to the little scissors down there to create a clip, and then kind of use the constraint tools to either you know export the entire clip or just a portion of it. And then over there on the right, save and export it out. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna default to save next to the clip uh, where it was originally on the on the folder. So the, the raw footage is going to be right next to the exported footage on your media drive. By the way, I also use a flat color profile with this footage. So in that case, you might also want to add some uh, contrast and some saturation just to get it to look a little bit more normal because if you export this out and then add your contrast and your saturation, your telemetry items on screen will also get more contrasty and more saturated, which may not be a big deal. It's up to you. 
Once the footage is exported out with the overlays baked in, then I personally would take it over to Premiere and start editing it my way. But again, you could always use GoPro's video editor as well. It's just kind of limited in my experience. So moving on to GoPro Hero 8, 9, and 10. We have to use the GoPro Quick app for Android or iOS. We can't easily use the desktop version of GoPro Quick because GoPro no longer supports it. It's only for seven, six, and five GoPros. There is a workaround. There's a $50 program to basically fix that issue for you. But if you want to do it for free, like I did, uh, you just go through your phone. So here is how we use the GoPro Quick app uh, on at least Android, in my case, to get these overlays baked into your footage. We're going to open up the GoPro Quick app and we're going to connect to our GoPro wirelessly. And once it's found itself and it has been connected, we're going to view media. And from there, we see all the footage on the micro SD card. Um, on my screen, you see all these little checks next to some of the clips, and those are ones I previously downloaded on my phone. So in this case, what you have to do is download the clip you want to use to your phone. We're gonna hold on to a clip, and then from there on the bottom, we're gonna select download. Of course, make sure you have enough storage space on your phone. And if you do more than a couple clips like this, uh, you're gonna have to really run out of space quick. But anyway, once we have the footage downloaded, we can see in the media tab at the bottom of the quick app, we see all the clips we downloaded. And here's a clip that we recorded. Now I'll just skip to the middle. You can see that's me flying. Um, so what I'm gonna do is pause it and then I'm gonna hit the edit icon there. And from there, swipe to the right on the bottom to see stickers. We, you now you'd be tempted to hit the speed icon there, but it's not speed, that's something different. Go to stickers. And from here you have your telemetry icon. So let's go ahead and add speedometer. Um, I want it on the lower left, so I'm gonna actually tap that a few times. It's gonna cycle around. And there we go, it's on the lower left. Um, let's also add a speed chart. That can be on the upper left. Uh, and I'm not gonna add G-Force, because I'll tell you what, I'm not sure if it's my GoPro 8 or if it's my larger Byblade props on my seven inch quad. G-Force does not work well with this quad. It, it kind of wigs out. Um, so like I said, it could be GoPro Hero 8. I, I don't even know, but I'm not going to use it, but that's a, that's an option. And then um, altitude is, it's not very dependable. Um, it doesn't really seem to uh, be accurate. So you could have an altitude if, if you're maybe like flying in some sort of ultralight glider or something. But you know, for this, where we're not really going above 400 feet, this is not going to be um, accurate enough to really use. So I'm not gonna use altitude either. But either way, you get the point that we can add whatever we want to, and just by tapping it, those different uh, things kind of cycle around the screen. We can add path, so it shows us our flight path um, over the course of the video. We can have that on the uh, upper right. And terrain, where it basically would show that flight path, but also a mini map of satellite overlay of landmarks and point, point of interest and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Now, if you watch the first part of this video where we're talking about the older GoPros, we were able to move those icons around just by dragging them with the mouse on the desktop version of this app. Since we're not using that, we cannot drag them around. You basically have four different positions, and once you use them up, that's all you could do. On the bottom right, we're gonna hit the check mark and then go to adjust on the bottom. And then add some contrast. I think I have uh, 60 to contrast and I have 30 to vibrance. And that's gonna help me to get a little bit better footage because I shot in flat color profile with this particular shot. So if I were to get this on the computer, and start editing in Premiere with the overlays, but I didn't already add uh, my saturation and my contrast, then if I was to do that in post-production in Premiere, I would be adding the saturation and the contrast also to those overlays, which may not be a big deal, but just wanna let you know, you have to do a little um, this color correcting and grading in the GoPro Quick App as much as you can before you get onto a computer. And then from here, we hit the top and save. Now, you have not actually saved this the way it is to your phone. What you have to do at this point is, there's that little share icon, upper right, 
and then save to phone. And this is where you're going to start using your phone's storage quite a bit. So you not only downloaded the clip once to your phone, you're also going to create a copy of it with the overlays. Once you've created the overlays, though, you can delete the old clip or delete the overlay clip once you transfer that to a computer or something like that. I like the gauges. I think the speedometer probably is the most accurate. It seems like the G-Force doesn't work so well with my Hero 8. Um, it also doesn't seem to work maybe well with my Byblade prop. I think it's just too much oscillation, so that may be the bigger issue there. Altitude doesn't seem to be very accurate either. There were some times where I was taking off and landing in the same spot and it was saying that I was 70 feet in the air still. It really doesn't make any sense. I'm not sure where it's, where it's getting that from. I've also noticed that the GPS gauge for speedometer will freeze sometimes. Uh, maybe if you're going underneath a building like this one, then perhaps you would see a, a freeze in your speedometer because of the, uh, you know, the buildings blocking your GPS connection with satellites. But also, I've seen it freeze in cold temperature. So in this particular instance, it just kind of locked up, and I, I was definitely modulating speed quite a bit. And it was stuck at this particular value for the rest of the flight. It was a very cold day. It was low 30s. So that's probably the reason why GoPro Hero 8 doesn't do well in cold weather. Um, but just a fair warning, these aren't perfect. I also think it's interesting that the telemetry gauges with the desktop version look different than the telemetry gauges with the GoPro Quick app on a phone. I kind of prefer the desktop version, to be honest. Uh, just a few more items there, a little more easier to uh, move things around to your liking. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comment below. And until next time, happy flying. Yeah.